chapter 9, if you will. John chapter 9. Is your name written down in that book? Amen. As the song said, when you got saved, or when you get saved, your name is written down Amen. in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. I got a thing in the mail a good while ago. In fact, I've got a number of them through the years. But it told different things that I could do that I might my name be written down in the book. I believe it was called uh, uh, Who's Who or something like this. And I, I, I could get my name put in there. I, I don't know, maybe $50 whatever it was, I don't remember. But only two or three problems. One is, what does it mean? Nothing. Number two, who cares? I mean, if my name is written down in their book. And the third thing is, was written down in the book that matters. Amen. And didn't cost me a daggone thing. The cross Christ is life. But my name might be written down in the Lamb's book of life. And I'm glad. I'm glad that he wrote it down. And by the way, he wrote it down in his blood. My friend, you can't erase it. Nobody can take it out. It's there, as the song said, forevermore. This morning, uh, I want you to uh, listen and think with me. The message I'm going to try to bring to you this morning has come from questions that have been asked me this week on the telephones and sitting in my office. Different questions have been asked. And uh, to be truthful with you, uh, as saved folks, now we know how to get saved. There's no one here, I don't believe, this morning that doesn't know how to get saved. And if you're not saved, it's nobody's fault but your own. You say, well, preach, I, I don't need to be saved. You know you do. <laughs> the Bible tells us we do. But yet there's times in life that we wonder. There's times in life that we flat don't know what to do. And uh, as I said this week, through many different things, questions have been asked. And I, I simply have to say, I don't know the answers exactly. I don't, I don't know uh, a lot of things. But this I know. My God is real. And my God is in control. I'm glad he's in control. We're in the book of John, chapter 9. We'll jump around. Uh, and, uh, well, let's go. John, chapter 9, verse number 1. And as Jesus passed by, Child of God, aren't you glad Jesus passed by that day for you? Amen. Mm. Amen. Halloween day, 1963. Uh, Jesus passed by where I was. I saw in the last week or two uh, so many different things telling how bad Halloween is. 
and all like this, and uh, in, in many ways it is. We know this. But you know, for me, it's one of the greatest days of all time. Uh, not because of uh, uh, Halloween, but because of that one who loved me so much. So my wife and I, we don't celebrate Halloween and we never go out and eat or anything, but that's our birthday, spiritually. Her and I both got saved. And I, I thank God for that. But Jesus passed by that day. By the way, folks, he's passing by here today. Amen. He's here. He's here. And as Jesus passed by, he stopped to say this. He passes by this morning. He sees you. Amen. He sees you. He sees me. Thus said as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now, if you can see as I see, I see a pitiful sight. A pitiful sight. A man that was blind from his birth. We don't know how old he is. He could be 20. He could be 80. We don't know how old he is. But he was blind from his birth. It tells me he has always been blind. He's never saw the sunrise. He's never saw the sunset. He's never looked up on the face of a little child. He's never saw the beauties of this world. I know this world is not a very good place, but I'll tell you what, this world is a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. And every bad thing we see of this world is because of man, not God. God made it all so beautiful. As Jesus passed by, he saw that man that had been blind from his birth. His disciples are with him. They're walking with him. And they see this man. And his disciples asked him, verse 2, saying, Master, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Master, why was this man born blind? You know, a lot of things we don't understand. And Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned. Now, by the way, he's not saying this man is perfect. How you know, preacher, from the Word of God? You see, all of this Bible is his. And you can't take one part out to prove something that is not Scripture. And so this man was a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. They asked him. Jesus said, neither hath this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now his disciples had been with him, had been traveling with him for this time during his public ministry. And uh, uh, here is a man that is blind, or if you will, sickness, and they asked the question, Master, why? Why is he sick? Why is he blind? Was it because of his sin? You know, sin 
does cause a lot of disease. Sin does cause a lot of problems. He said, they said, is it his sin? Or is it his, his parents' sin that this man is born blind? Was something that his parents did that when this man was born as a baby that he was born blind? Was, is it something that they did? By the way, parents, we got to be careful what we do. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of watching us. Moms and dads, remember your kids watching every step you take. There's people that should be here this morning, could be here this morning, but are not here this morning. Because they chose something else. It may have been a ball game. It may have been, I don't know. It may have been they had a headache. You say, preacher, you making fun of headaches? No. I remember Michael, our boy in this home in heaven. He used to tell his mom, I said, Mom, if we never went to church, every time we had a headache, we'd never go to church. <laughs> From the time he was little, he always had headaches. And some of you all, I, I thank God for you when you're here. Sometimes you don't feel like it, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you, the devil will give you something to keep you from feeling like it. But he said, was it his sin, his parents' sin, that he was born blind? Uh, so there we see some reasons for sickness. You see, there is a sickness because of sin. There is a sickness because of mama or daddy. There is the sickness unto death. And then we find there's a sickness. My friend, Her name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I don't know. I, I can't say it in my mind. I, I don't know it exactly. But somewhere out beside of your name and mine, there's a date. You know, you look on the tombstones and it has born and such and such a date. Dying in such and such a day. In God's record book, the side of our name, there's a date written down that we're going to die. You say, Priest, you sure? Hebrews 9. It's appointed. My wife's got all kinds of appointments on our calendar. The other day, I, we, we, we've got some funny things in our house. I mean, the size of my wife. Uh, we, we've got uh, something there called, is it uh, doodle, doodle, doodly or something. Uh, and you can say, hey, 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 uh, what is it? Google. Hey, Google. Uh, one of my little granddaughters when we got it. Uh, used to say, uh, what was it she said? I can't remember. Yeah, she'd say, hey, doodle. And that thing would answer. The rest of us would try and it wouldn't answer. But you can say, hey, Google, what time is it? And tell you the time and all. The other day I decided to say, hey, Google, what does my calendar say for November the 8th? 
She said, you got a missions conference. Who's going to be there? She tells us who's going to be there. I've got two women that tell them what to do. <laughs> I, can't, I can't forget. I can't miss any of them. But I'll tell you what. In that record book, there's a day that you and I are going to die. Now, you can go to all the doctors you want. And I'm not against doctors. I thank God for them. I tell you, I've got, uh, I, I, I've got pieces in my heart. So, uh, they've been in my heart so many times. And I've got machinery in there. I, mean, I, I, I thank God for doctors. Someone says, I don't believe in doctors. Well, uh, that's up to you. But I thank God for my doctors. They, humanly, they have helped me. Uh, if you follow me, if you was with me this morning, I start my day off. Uh, my wife and I have prayer together in bed. You say, should be on your knees. You have a hard time getting off of your <laughs> knees as I did. You'd be glad to pray anyway. Amen. But then my wife says, you got to take your medicine. My friend, I've got a cup like that. And it's got about 30 pills in it. The first thing I do is take 30 pills and throw them in the mouth. Swallow them. You say, preacher, I don't believe in medicine. You don't have to. You say, preach, I don't like to take medicine. I don't either. But my friend, I like what God has given me through it. I'm thankful for the medicine. But you know, they can give me all the pills they want. They can give you all the pills. You can have all the medicine. You can have all the doctors you want. You're still going to die. Because it's written down. When you're going to die. Oh. Uh, well, let me hurry. Oh. Uh, but Jesus answered and said, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. And we don't know why people are sick. Now that tells us something else. That teaches we, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but uh, that teaches us we need to be careful about judging people. You see, we know there's the four different reasons, three different for sickness, but when I look at you and see you're sick, I don't know what the reason is. You say, well, preacher, they, they was out doing this and that is because of sin. Could be. But I'm not the judge. Yeah. I'm not the one. You see, a lot of things we see aren't really what we see. We see a lot of things we think we see and we're not really seeing the truth about it all. So he says, be careful. Yeah. Verse 4, he said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. And the night cometh when no man can work. But as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. There's some lessons here that we can learn. And if we would learn these, it would make life a lot easier for you and I. It would make life a whole lot better for you and I. Remember this. Now, this is real profound. You never think you'd hear me say this profound one. But my friend, God is God and we are not God. That's right. God is God and we are not God. Folks, we do not and we cannot understand the ways of God. If we cannot understand him, 
then my friend, we must trust him and not question. We must trust him and not question. About four things I want us just to look at and uh, these, these are things that will help you and I in our daily walk if we will put them in here Put them in here. The Bible says, hide the word of God in my heart and then I sin against it. If we have these things that God teaches us, if we have them where they're in front of us, then when things come along, it will help us to do what's right. Now, number one, be careful about criticizing other people. Be careful. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 1, it says, judge not that ye may not judge. Judge not. Criticism is something that is so easy for us to do. I mean, I, I, I look at people and I think, man, I, I, wish, I, uh, I wish I had a head of hair like uh, Don's got well, like Don used to have all of it. Uh, but I mean, I, uh, I, 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 I look at that and I, uh, I look at all of you. I look, uh, some of you that are younger, you got that good health. And, uh, I see someone come over and talk to me, and then they just take step up on this platform, and uh, I look at them and I think, is that possible? Uh, I remember the day I did that, but can't anymore. Uh, but we look. Uh, well, why is so and so sick? Why? Why do all these people come in with the canes and the walkers? Uh, in the Bible, they why does four men come carry that man to Jesus? You see, we look and we see, and it's easy to criticize. Why? Well, I, I know why that guy did it because. He did that or something else. My friend, you and I don't know. The reason that man is sick might not be because of his sin, his parents' sin, that sin, my, uh, that sickness and all might be in the glory of God. You remember a man by the name of the Apostle Paul? Lord, remove this thorn, remove, remove this Lord. He prayed three times asking God to heal. The Lord never did. But I'll tell you what, the sure brought glory to the name of God. Amen. You and I need to be careful. Be careful. Uh, the sad thing is that criticism is a thing that most of us are pretty good at. Criticize someone else. You know, there's only one that can truly, if you want to use the word criticize us, show us what is wrong without hurting us, without wounding us. It is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And if you are saved, my friend, the Holy Spirit will work on your heart. Again, hide the word of God in thy heart. We have it there. And then when we do something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, have me a camel. Really, I don't have any in here. I start to put it up there. Holy Spirit says, I thought you were a child of God. Why well, am? Holy Spirit says, you're not your own, you're bought with a price. You're to honor and glorify the name of Jesus Christ. I said, oh me. Father, forgive me. Forgive me. You know, 
the Holy Spirit can convict us. And my friend, the Holy Spirit will convict. Christian, if you say if you say you are a Christian and you can sin and the Holy Spirit does not work on your heart, I'd make my way to an old fashioned altar and make sure my heart is right with God. Yes. The Holy Spirit can speak to us. Now, keep this in mind. If we are critical and criticizing people, our hearts are not right with God. We have a critical uh, spirit and we cannot have fellowship with God when we have that critical spirit in our lives. You can't be wrong with others and be right with God. If you're right with God, my friend, you'll be forgiven. Won't be so critical. I used to think that when you got old, you know, uh, my wife's dad was pretty old and he'd get up out of a chair. And man, it, it'd take him five minutes to straighten up. And then he'd stand and he'd shake like an inch. Uh, I mean, he'd try, but we look at him and thought, man, he just put him on. Until then. <laughs> now then, it takes me 10 minutes to get out of a chair. You need to be critical. You need to be careful about being critical. Don't judge others. The disciples said, Lord, whose fault is it? Whose fault? The Lord said, neither one. I find a second thing. And that is, we need to submit to the sovereignty of God. Amen. John 9 now we know that God heareth not sinners. If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? And if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, Thou wast all together born in sin, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And verse 37, And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. The sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God. My friend, as God is, remember, he has the absolute right to do all things according to his own good pleasure. God has the authority. He has power. He has authority over nature, over earthly things, over kings, over history, over angels, and over demons. My friend, our God is an all-powerful God. Amen. He doesn't have to answer to any man. It was Billy Graham who said many years ago, if, if God doesn't judge America, then he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't mean it in that exact way because Billy Graham knew what you and I know. And that is God don't have to apologize to anybody. That's right. 
What he does is his will. It's his will. We must realize that in all things, God is in control. That's right. Blind man. Could God have kept him from being blind as a child? No. Why didn't he do it? It's a good question when you get home to heaven. You ask him, not me. Well, I don't know the answer. But my friend, I know this. God is in control. Right. The questions asked me this week over and over. Like I said on the telephones, and different ones coming in, sitting there in a chair in my office. And saying, preacher, why? Why? And I'll tell you, I feel so bad because I don't have the answers. You say, well, preaching, you can tell them that them pray and God will heal them. My friend, it's not always God's will for them to be healed. Right. I told you about as I stood in the hospital in emergency room, I got a call. I went into the emergency room. By the way, a wife with a blue hanky, you say, you're not supposed to have those. Well, you blame Katie, she got them for me. Uh, but anyway, as I walked in, a girl met me, a woman. She said, Preacher, please pray for my dad. They say that he's dying. The preacher prayed that my dad had get well. I prayed, Lord. Please help this father and this daddy to get well. She went back into the room. I started in another daughter met me and said, Preacher, pray that God would keep daddy from the pain. Just take daddy on home to heaven. And I started to pray and I thought, now I just prayed for him to get well. And now you only pray that God takes him home. I learned a lesson that day. Not my will, but thy will Amen. be done. Amen. So today you say, preach and pray for this. I'll pray for God's will. Now I can guarantee you that God's will is better. Not what I know. You see, God is sovereign. God has a reason for everything that he does. You say, I don't understand. Well, one day. Third thing, we need to be wise in our the way we spend our time. John 9, for I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Christians, God didn't send us here to understand all. God didn't send us here to explain it all. I have people say, Preacher, tell me what this says. Can you prove the Bible to me? I don't even try. You see, when God called me, he called me to preach the Bible, not to prove the Bible. Right. You say, well, prove it? Well, I don't have to. You, you take a, a, a lion and turn him loose, and you don't have to protect him. He'll take care of himself. <laughs> My friend, you just take this old book and turn it loose. God will take care of that. It's never been proved wrong. It will not be proved wrong. This is God's word. And my friend, it will stand forever. Work for the night is coming. 
Folks, we don't need to ask so many questions. Why is this one blind? And why is this one deaf? And why, 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 why my children? Why am I going through all the heartaches that I'm going through? Why, preacher, why, why, God, why? The truth is, we'll never understand it, this side of heaven. You say, yeah, preacher, I haven't heard one on TV the other day telling you that if he'd send you $50, he'd, 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 he'd answer anything you want. Well, all he's doing is wanting to get rich. There have been a number of people that have wrote books on the day the Lord was coming. They got rich off of them, the Lord hadn't come. You say, preacher, why it's going on while in Gaza or the strip over there? Why is things going on in Ukraine? Preacher, why? I don't know the answer. But I've got a God that's got it all under control. Amen. It's all in his hand. But we need to be wise in our time. You see, God didn't call us to prove all of these things. God called us and called us and said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. God has called us to go. Now, God has not told us to try to prove anything, but to simply tell the gospel message. Now, that is what God requires of us. God does not require, require of us to make someone believe. I cannot make anyone believe. Oh, I can talk you with people down Nile, and I can get them to repeat a prayer. But my friend, that's not. If the Holy Spirit can't do it, grow a maple can. Whatever your problem is, God's got it in his hand. We need to trust him. And we need to spend our time wisely. And throw for a few things at you real fast. Number one, realize that each day that you have is a gift from God. Right. Looking forward to Christmas. More looking forward to the gifts. But I'll tell you what, my friend, you get a gift every morning. And God gives you Amen. another day. Amen. We need to commit our time to God. The Bible says over in the book of Psalms 90, it says, so teach us to number our days. You see, in the book, God knows when we're going to die. We don't. So he says, number, teach us to number our days. And we need to use each day. Commit them unto God. My friends, let's don't do anything to bring shame to our God. No. Three, we need to set a time, aside time each day for God. And for others. The Bible says in Matthew 6 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Did you notice? He said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. The first thing we ought to do every morning, realize this is a, it's a gift from God, realizing that. We are to give that day to him. Then, my friend, we need to put him first in our life. So many times we may go through the whole day without thinking about the Lord, without praying, and without reading the Bible. Now I know I've got a special people here. And I know we don't have one person this week that hadn't prayed and hasn't read the Bible 
every day. Well, I'm prejudiced. But you know we all fail, don't we? We all fail. But we're to seek Him first. Amen. We're to give the Lord the first part of the day. Now, He didn't say we had to give, uh, you know, stay on our knees uh, 24 hours a day. But He said, seek you first. Put God first. But we need to take time also for our own needs. Whether we want to face or not, my friends, we do have need. We need to take time. Jesus himself talking with his disciples and all in the book of Mark. And he said unto them, Come ye yourself apart into a desert place and rest. A while. The Lord said, Come apart, men. Come apart. Rest. You see, we all need to rest. A tired body can't do anything. We need a time to rest. Sometimes it's easy to feel guilty if we don't take time off. But my friend, we are. Now, have to admit, after 54 years of pastoring, one of the things that I never thought much about was, I think I can keep going. I would then get up four o'clock in the morning and still be going midnight and after, day after day, week after week, year after year. And I almost felt guilty if I did. I mean, but then one day the Lord says, son, come apart. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the bed. He said, come apart and rest a while. Remember this. You see, if we don't rest, we're weary. We're slow. Remember that. The devil is seeking those whom he made to devour. When you and I are sick and slow, pretty easy for him to catch us on guard. It's not wrong. And he says that we need to take time apart. When we're tired and worn out, we're easy prey for the devil. Easy prey for the devil. But the fourth thing I see, Jesus said that as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. My friend Jesus is going to back to the Father. And he said, let your little light shine before men that you might bring glory to the name of God. Yeah. My friend, you and I, we don't have a very bright light. I mean, some of us especially aren't very bright. But uh, he said, let your little light shine. They tell me if you would take a match, and by the way, I don't have a match because I don't have a camel in my pocket. So I don't need it. But a little match, if you take that one little match and light it, they say that match in total darkness can be seen for 20 miles. Think about that. That's a little light. But what if we had 100 people and let 100 matches shine? You see, we'd have a pretty good size light. Why should we let our little light shine? It might bring glory to the name of God. Amen. Christians, in our walk in life, we are to bring glory to the name of God. Now, we'll shine for our Savior, if you will. How are we going to shine for Jesus? Well, just throw a couple things at you. How do we shine? Romans 12, verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed 
by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We're to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed. We're not of the world. He said, you're in the world, you're not of the world. We are in the world. We, we're not, uh, as not being part of the world, we are not to act like the world, look like the world, smell like the world. Friends would be different. One of my grandchildren, granddaughters, cut up the other day. And I, I, I don't pay much attention to them. I don't trust any of my girls. And uh, I felt something there. And then I got to thinking, they hurt. And they had stuck a dumb ear ring on my ear. <laughs> Can you imagine that? But I thought, if I get up to preach with that ear ring on, <laughs> I'm not going to bring too much glory to God. <laughs> but not to look like the world. I mean, listen, you, you don't have to keep up with the world. You don't have to look like the world. Well, all these other preachers are got earrings, nose rings, and that. I don't care what they got. By the grace of God, you got one preacher that ain't going to have any of them. Amen. He didn't call me to look like the world. We're to shine for him. In order to do that, one, we must be careful what we say. Be careful what we say. It has been said that if you can't say something nice about someone, don't say anything. You know, that, that comes from my mama. She didn't have much of an education, but she's pretty smart. That's good advice. If we're going to shine for Jesus. Second, consider your entertainment. Now remember, he said come apart. There's not wrong to enjoy things. There's not anything wrong with enjoying, enjoying a ball game. <coughs> Until you stay home on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. In order to enjoy the whole thing. Well, my, my children's playing, preacher. You don't you don't expect me to admit no. But the thing is, I saw the other day, there's only like one chance out of I believe it was four million chances that your child will ever be a professional ball player, dancer, or anything else. But it's proof. That every one of them will die. Right. Right. Yep. We need to be careful on entertainment. And then we need to be careful what we think about others. There's that blind man. Lord, why is he blind? There's that blind man who got that stick trying to find his way through the line. I said to judge him, why couldn't we come alongside put his arm in our arm and walk with him? Help him out. You see, lost people don't need a judge. They need a friend. A friend is someone that knows all about you and still loves you. We're to be friends. And to think about others. Be patient with people. Be patient with people. Now, I know, I, again, every, there's no one that wouldn't be patient in this one. But be patient with others. Why? For Christ's sake. Christ's sake. The Bible says in Luke 6, 31, And as you would have men that they should do unto you, do ye also unto them likewise. 
Listen, I should do to Terry as I want him to do to me. I should do to Brad, Larry, whoever. My friend, if I fall, I want someone to help me get up. I don't want someone to come along and step all over me. Kick me. I want someone to pick me up. Amen. And when we do, we're bringing honor to the name of God. Amen. My friend, we can ask all kinds of questions why what's happening in different places in our world. Not get the answer. Preacher, if if my daughter dies, is it my fault? Twice this week I've been asked that question. Let's be what honest. Let's do what God wants us to do. But remember this. When it's time to go, everybody's going to go. My God's in control. Amen. And I'm so glad. His hand, a lot bigger than mine. Right. If you're unsaved, my friend, he knows when you're going to die. But if your name's in that book, when you die, it's goodbye, old world. Hello, home. Amen. With Jesus. But if you aren't saved and in hell, he lift up his eyes in torment, suffering, in pain, eternally. My friends, are you saved? If not, that all powerful, almighty God will save you. I don't care what you've done. What you've done means nothing. Someone said this morning, preacher, wouldn't it be good if, uh, I forget who it was, uh, that said that uh, uh, Hood, or whatever his name is there in Russia, you know, wouldn't it be good for the Lord to save him? You know, the Lord can't save him. Right. Why don't he? I don't have the answers. But I know I've got a God. It's got it all in control. And my friend, let's don't, let's don't cut our God short. Every head bowed and every eye closed. No matter what problem you're going through, you just keep praying. You keep doing what God wants you to do. You say, preach, I've asked my kids time and again about coming to the Lord and they just laugh at me. They won't have nothing to do with it. They won't believe me, preacher. I've, I've done this and I've done that. I've asked so-and-so to come to church and they won't come with me. And listen, it does no good to talk to people about the Lord until we talk to the Lord about people. Whatever you need as we stand, will you come this morning? you say if you're without Jesus there's only one main need you and that is to be saved will you come will you come there's a need in your life there's a battle that you're fighting you're defeated You've been knocked down. You feel like the count is nine. Feel like you're almost gone. Oh, don't give up. Jesus is still there. Put your hand in his hand. 
He'll lift you up. Will you come? Whatever the needs are. This morning. Without Jesus' mind, you have that great need of being saved. Will you come? Will you come? Our pianist is playing one more verse. morning. We pray that you'll be back uh, tonight. Prayer meetings, practical, and uh, uh, preaching service, six o'clock. We pray you'll be here for this. Then pray for all these that are sick. Get the prayer list out there and as you go out. And uh, we love you. Pray you'll be back tonight as every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Um, Bruce, take us. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord, and again, the preaching of your word, Lord. Just help us to, to, to take it to heart, Lord. Help us to live for you, be a witness for you this day throughout our life, Lord. And uh, we just thank you. Thank you for our salvation and uh, thanking you for uh, watching and taking care of our needs day to day, Lord. And, and how you blessed us, and Lord, we just mentioned the prayer request again, Lord, as many in the hour and uh, much need, Lord, we just pray that your will be done in each one, and just help us to be the light that you would have us to be in a lost and dying world, Lord, and uh, again, just thank you for all you do for us, amen. Amen. amen.